Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk about my design for issue 249 of Knitting Magazine and it is the sign that's on the cover. So I'm going to show you a look at the actual garment and um, what the photos look like in the magazine and also just show you a quick peek of what else is in the magazine and what I think of this yarn. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell my yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. If you watched my podcast last week, you will know that I have COVID. So I'm filming this on the Friday before it goes on YouTube on the Tuesday. And I've had COVID all this week. So I'm still a little bit bunged up. I'm a lot better. I'm not blowing my nose and coughing as much as I have been. But I still sound like I'm full of cold. But it is COVID. So not been too bad. I've been able to do a little bit of work every day. But I've also taken it easy and done a lot of knitting. But this sample just arrived back in the post from the magazine. The magazine was out the day before I filmed this. So yesterday. So it's in the uh, shops in the UK at the moment. And I gave you a quick peek of this magazine in my last uh, podcast episode, which was out last Thursday. But the sample haven't come back yet, so it just arrived back now, literally five minutes ago. So I thought I'd film a quick video telling you more about this, this design, the construction method, method, the design details, and also tell you about the yarn and what I think about that. And also quick peek at some of the other designs in this magazine. So I was really excited a few days ago when this magazine arrived because that is my design on the cover. And it's always really exciting to have a design on the cover, even though I've been designing now for 17 years, 16, 17 years, um, quite a long time. And I don't know when my first design on the cover was. I guess I've probably been designing for a couple of years, maybe. I've had quite a few designs on magazine covers by now, but I'm still really excited every time it happens. Oops, that didn't look good. So that that is the magazine. And it is Knitting Magazine, issue 249. And the theme for this issue is Calm, celebrating the soothing power of knitting. Let's have a look at this sweater first, then we'll look more at the um, magazine in a minute. So I'm just glancing at the magazine to make sure I don't get these details wrong because obviously we worked on this design months ago and it was one of my sample knitters who actually knitted it. So I have knitted with this yarn because obviously I knitted the um, swatch for it and I also did some of the finishing details. So I have knitted with this yarn but one of my sample knitters actually knitted the actual sweater and I really appreciate her doing that for me. I couldn't do what I do without my sample knitters. So I'm very grateful for them. So the yarn this was knitted in is the Wool Kitchen Blue Face Leicester Superwash. So it's 100% superwash merino um, from the Wool Kitchen, which is a UK-based indie dyer. It is DK yarn and it has approximately 200 per meters per 100 grams. And it is knitted in the colorway Iridium. I think I pronounced that correctly, iridium. I assume that's like a um, chemistry term. I, the science was my worst subject in school. And the sweater is also called the same. Um, somebody who's a bit more into science than me. I think, is it a metal? Or, I don't know, something to do with science, I'm pretty sure. It starts in the, at the bottom with a rib. And if you see here, at the centre front, it has this cable. And the cable fits in with that rib. Can you see? Oh, you can see it here. So this knit two goes into that twist and this knit two goes into that one. Um, I like little details like that. Um, it makes it just leaves, you know, makes sort of the finishing details quite nice, I think. So it starts from the bottom and it's working around to the underarms and then the front and the back is worked separately, flat to the shoulders. And then you join the shoulders by working a three needle cast off. The stitches are picked up around the armhole and then the sleeve is worked from the top down with a short row sleeve cap. So short rows are worked across the sleeve cap to shape the sleeve. It's a really, really easy way of doing um, shaped sleeve caps. And it, it means you don't have to sew in the sleeve cap into the armhole afterwards, which is something that a lot of knitters find quite tricky. If you're new to short rows, 
don't worry this is a really easy way of doing short rows and a great introduction to short rows i do have a tutorial so i will link that at the end of this video um which will give you an idea of how it works and then um once you get to the underarm the sleeves are then knitted straight uh, in the round to the bottom uh body um the sleeves is stocking stitch the body is mostly stocking stitch so the back is just stocking stitch and the front is stocking stitch with this rib cable detail in the middle so if you have a um, cable with uh, purl stitches either side so there's like a knit two in the middle purl two the cable and then another purl two and mirrored on the other side there are some quite bright colors in here and i really like it you can obviously if you prefer use more of a solid color or a semi-solid color if you like, don't like the speckled look be careful by going for something that's too variegated because then the detail of the cable doesn't tend to show because this sweater has a lot of um stocking stitch that's perfect for this kind of more variegated speckled yarn but I don't think it's so much that it detracts from this cable. It's not that easy to see it on the screen, but in real life you can clearly see the cables. So it's not so much variegation that it detracts from it. To me, especially on the back, it looks like somebody's just like chucked, flick painted your sweater. And I really, really like that look. So I really wish, as I normally say, I wish this was my size, but sadly it is not. Anyway, the sleeves are finished off with a 2x2 two two rib like the hem on the sweater and there's also two, uh, there's also a 2x2 two two rib around the neckline which uh, matches up with the cables and the knit two in the centre at the detail at the front here. So the sweater, because it's worked in the round, it's a lot of just knitting. Uh, obviously it does more purling when you do the top part of the sweater because that's worked back and forth. But it's a lot of knitting in the round mostly in stocking stitch but then you have these cables to add a little bit of detail so you don't get bored knitting just stocking stitch and uh, but it's quite a relaxing nice pleasant sweater to knit so this yarn is blue face leicester and blue face leicester is not quite as soft as merino but it is the softest out of the british sheep breeds from what i understand um, so normally the softest sheep wool is merino and then down from that I think most people consider blue face Leicester to be the softest at least here in the UK um, that's considered the, the softest one so it's not as soft and silky feeling as merino but it is very soft to the touch but you can feel a slight different from merino the yarn is really lovely to knit with I have quite a bit left nearly I think it's nearly a full skein and it's a really nice bouncy yarn so it's quite a sort of round yarn and it has if I show you here it's a little bit kind of elastic and it's a really nice yarn to knit with it creates really nice stif stitch definition really nice even stitches I'm just trying to undo the end of the yarn to tell you how many plies this yarn has so ply is each of these individual strands that make up this yarn and it looks like it is one two three four yes yeah, so it looks like it's made up of four plies um when you talk about plies in terms of the way the yarn is spun that's different from what we talk about in the uk when we talk about plies in the term of thickness of the yarn so a yarn that has four or more plies or individual strands of, of yarn is a kind of rounder more bouncy yarn and it does tend to create a more even stitch definition which this yarn definitely has so as you knit it your stitches will look more nice and even obviously it will vary a bit with your tension as well and you do have to be careful when you go from knitting in the round to back and forth that's when people quite often get problems with their tension because their tension is different knitting in the round because when you knit in the round if you're doing stocking stitch you're just doing knit stitches and then when you come here you're doing knit stitches and purl stitches alternate rows and quite often for most knitters their purl tension will be different from their knit tension so where you go from knitting in the round to back and forth if your stitches look different uh, it's because of um, that your purl tension is different from your knit tension my purl tension used to be tighter than my knit tension 
and I became quite aware of that and I worked really hard over a long period of time to correct that and now I would say my tension is fairly even whether I'm knitting the round or I'm doing stocking stitch back and forth um so purling as well but a lot of people do have a looser pearl tension than they do knit tension so that's any sweaters that go from being working around to back and forth you have to be careful with that because this yarn is speckled I did not alternate skeins so it's quite often recommended when you're knitting with hand dyed yarn that you alternate skeins so you would do one round with one skein and one round with a second skein and then you'd swap over every other round I didn't do that with this because it is speckled yarn if the yarn is sort of more solid semi-solid or variegated sometimes that can be um and um a recommendation to do because with all yarns it can vary from dye lot to dye lot but with hand dyed yarn it can vary from skein to skein even within the same dye lot if you like uh, but i think with speckled yarn it's that's less of a problem and i certainly didn't have this problem uh, with this sweater the speckles are fairly evenly distributed around the whole sweater so i love this colorway and i just wished it fitted me and i really like this yarn as well okay so let me show you some of the pictures in the magazine so obviously that is the model picture on the front of the magazine um in the back of the issue there is an article about the um person behind a blog called yards of happiness it looks like she likes very colorful yarns and then we have all the patterns which i'm not going to show you um knitting magazine puts all their patterns together in the back of the magazine then we have a tutorial for steaking and then there's the ask sarah column and some kids designs i'm just going to go through this very quickly some men's designs and a cable cushion and then they do this um, thing in every issue where they take three designs and show them in different colorways and with different accessories that you can wear them with. So this time um, my design wasn't chosen for that. They choose three different things every issue. Then we've got some quite colorful designs. And then a couple of shawls and the vest. And that's my sweater there. And then it's that colourful sweater by Christine on the other side. Christine is the editor of Knitting Magazine. And then there's two other very nice classic sweaters. And a long line cardigan. And then there's a yarn review. Book review. And then there's a feature by uh, Sarah Neal. Um, who I worked with for many years um, as she used to be the editor of another magazine that, that I used to design for so I worked for, for her with her for a long time when she was an editor um, she's done an article on Danish knitwear design so designed in Denmark if you are on social media I you probably noticed there are some quite high profile Danish designers Petite Knit probably being the most popular of them but there are a few others as well and this article is basically a four page spread about Danish design. Um, I haven't read it yet, but from the pictures, it looks like most of the pictures are from Petite Knit. Um, but I assume there are some others featured there as well. So I'm hoping to be able to sit down and read some of this this weekend. Um, I read some of this this week, but I've been trying to focus on doing as much knitting as possible this week as I've not been able to um, work as much or go out and do anything because of covid so news pages which i always like reading that's kind of my favorite part of a magazine really is reading all the news new products events books all the rest of it issue 249 of knitting magazine in the shops in the uk now um featuring my design from the wool kitchen on the cover blue face lester dk yarn from the wool kitchen Fun, easy sweater. If you have a knitted sweater using this construction method before, this would be a quite an easy sweater to start with because there isn't too much stitch pattern detail, so you can focus more on the construction method. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.